My name is Jim Brown. I'm 29 years old. I live alone and I have a young brother named Will. My parents have always compared me to Will. Will is a good kid. Maybe he'll be president in the future. He was the better student, so he was voted on. I was hated by my parents. When I was little, I was the only one who didn't get snacks. And if Will and I got into a fight, I was the only one who got the butt and not the stick. Now that I live on my own, that doesn't happen anymore. But it was bad in the old days. I don't know if Will is still at home. I don't know what kind of work he's doing. I thought, well, he's not that interested. And then, one day, I get a call from my father. Jim, how are you? What's up with the sudden call? I just wanted to call you to say I'm sorry. Sorry for what? I'm sorry I haven't really been there for you. It's your birthday soon. I wanted to apologize to you as well as celebrate. I'd like you to come to my house. Dad, well, I'll be home next week for the first time in a long time. Thanks, Jim. I'll be waiting for you. I can't believe that my father wanted to apologize to me. I didn't expect that. I mean, he's never liked me, but if we can stay on good terms, that will all the matters. So I decided to go home for the first time in a while. Oh, Jim, you're back. It's been a long time. You haven't been home since you graduated from college, so I'm glad to see you. Ha 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 ha. You two are too happy. We will. I think he's in his room, but still, it's been so long. It's good to see you. Me too, Dad. Me too, Dad. I'm glad you've been thinking about these things. Ha 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 ha. I can't take this anymore. You laughed first, so you lost. I win the bet. Dad, Mom. What the hell is wrong with you? Did you think we'll ever be sorry for the way they treated you? We still care about Will. We don't give you a shit about you. But you're celebrating my birthday. I knew you wouldn't come home unless I said so. I made a bet with my mom. The one who could keep cheating Jim would get the $100. And I lost $100 because you reacted so nicely. You're gonna have to pay for it. Even my mother said that. She's not celebrating your birthday, is she? You're 29 years old and you're trying to get your parents to give a shit about you. And you're not ashamed of it? Yes, but we celebrate well every year. There's no reason for me to celebrate for you. Shame on you, shame on you. You lied to me about everything about wanting to apologize to me. I thought we could put the past behind us, make it up to each other. I'm not going to apologize to you, you failure. If you want me to apologize, you're gonna have to be a little better than that. Well, I've already disowned a failure like you. Don't you ever come to my house again. You failure, get out of my house. I let out a sigh of my parents' heartless words. Then I said something to my parents who were getting on my nerves. This is the last time we are going to see each other. So I called a sudden voice. A few minutes later, a string of luxury cars pulled up in front of our house. And me and Suze got out. What the hell? Jim, what the hell have you done? Mom and dad both called me a failure. I'm a business owner now, owning three companies. Don't lie to me. You can't run a business. Why are you so judgmental? Anyone can be a business owner if they want to be. Of course, you need to have a sense of how to run a business from there. But I've always had a sense of running a business. You always done worse than Will. You'll never be a business owner what you guys thought. I did pretty well in school. You didn't know that because you were always taking care of Will and ignoring me. Oh no. Oh, I've got a good idea. You own three companies. You must be making a lot of money. Give us all the money you make. Yeah, that's a good idea. Give us the money and I'll apologize for ever calling me a failure. Don't you think it's a good idea? I don't think so, Dad. Didn't you notice? What? I've been sending money to your account every month. You kept saying I should give you my money, but actually, I am sending you money every month. I don't know anything about that. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I always wonder why there is money coming in every month, but... Oh, that was you. You didn't know this? I mean, I owe you for lending me, even though you were such a bad feeling. I've been sending the money to repay them, but... Okay, that's alright. Then give me your money from now, okay? No, I'm not giving you any more money. What the hell? We are your parents. 
do you know why I went to the trouble of inviting one of my employees to this house to give you this? I took the attache case from my employee and handed it to my father. What the hell is this? There is money in it. I'm going to give you one last severance package and I want you to leave me alone from now on. I won't send you any money from now on either. What nonsense are you talking about? I'll allow you to stop sending money. That's right. You don't care about your parents. But you didn't take care of me. While I was arguing with my parents, we all came from the back of the room. Hello Jim, it's been a long time. Oh Will, don't come out here. You should be in your room relaxing. Wait a minute, Will, you're blowing your hair and your beard. Are you not working? Yeah, I'm just... Will is sensitive. He couldn't handle the laugh and tumble of society. That's why we're taking him in. Oh my god, his parents love him so much. Will is now an unpaid man who can't do anything. Oh, I've got an idea. I worried about your little brother, Will. Of course, I'm worried about my only brother. Well then, if you stop sending him money, Will won't be able to survive. You're a genius. If you worry about him, keep sending money. Do you both think that's a sweat? Will will be fine and he'll continue to live. What are you talking about? We're living on a small pension. We can support Will without your money. Yes, if you care about Will, send money. No, I won't and I'm taking Will in. What? He will may be a need, but he's not a blame. It's just a desire of your spoiling him. I'm gonna take him in and I'm gonna dehavulate him. Bruce said, I'm not gonna let you do that. All you had to do was shut up and send money home. If I send money to Will, he's only going to get a bare minimum. If that's the case, it would be better for me to take care of him instead of sending him money. Don't be ridiculous. What's going to happen to our lives? I don't give a shit. Well, are you sure you want to go on like this? Are you going to let your parents cuddle you and make you nothing? I want to be able to do everything myself. I don't want to be tied down by mom and dad anymore. We will take care of you, Will. You have everything you need. We don't need you. Neither one of us will be alive forever. I will on my own. It's no use the two of you holding him back. Just give up and leave him alone. Wait a minute, please don't go. Please send me more money. Then I took Will to my own company. First, I'm going to put Will in a field to teach him the basics of the job. I'm going to provide him with a lot of support and I'm going to teach him more than a lucky. His parents had run out of money quickly and couldn't live on their pensions. They will start working part time to make ends meet. And at my age, I still have to work. I'm the one who said that if you've been sending money home, you'll be in better position. What? You're saying it's my fault? As it turns out, it is. Why do I have to go through this? I'm sure they will always blame you for what happened. It's your fault. We was teaching me how to do my job. He was apologetic. I'm sorry about you. I'm sorry I ever had to do this. I saw what they did to you. You don't have to apologize, we are brothers and we can help each other out. Okay, thank you Jim. From now on, I want us to run the company together. My name is Thomas Wood, I'm 22 years old. I finished high school but I didn't go to college. I didn't go to college because I wouldn't say I liked studying. People taught me I should go to college but I wanted to get to work instead. I don't really like my choice. Of course, many people make fun of me because I only graduated from high school. I don't care what they say about me at all. I'm working as a construction worker on a construction site. And a foreman from the giant construction company who comes here. Bob is the one who makes fun of me. Hey, high school graduate, I told you to call it this. You're useless. Bob never called me by name. You're a subcontractor. You need to work smart. You're getting paid to work, so make sure you work hard. He's always cursing the subcontractors because he's the one with the most power on the job site. He's always bossing them. And then, when I was taking a break, what are you, lazy high school graduate paycheck thief? It's a break time. What are you talking like a big shot? You're a subcontractor and an uneducated idiot with a high school diploma. 
Bob takes advantage of the fact that he's a major construction company and looks down on subcontractors. You are a pain to us. It's your attitude that's keeping the site from coming together. It's a foreman's job to keep things together, and I'm doing my job. When I argue with him, he glared at me and went into his office. Look at this. You've got a lot of complaints about you. He showed me a piece of paper with complaints on it. It said something about some stupid guy being a nuisance and that I should stop dyeing my hair. I'm the one who dyes my hair in this field. What are you going to do? One idiot like you makes it harder for us elites. You're fired. There are plenty of etiquette people to replace you. Don't come here tomorrow. Bob said that and spit cock on me. Ha ha ha, subcontractors can't complain anything, can they? Bob laughs while holding his stomach. I guess I'll quit then. I said with a smile, Bob was surprised that I said I would quit so easily. At this point, I decided I won't let this guy do what he wanted anymore. I didn't go to the job site the next day, as Bob wanted me to do. Bob was still disrespectful and in charge of the substructure workers. I wasn't the only one being disrespected and made fun of by him. The substructure workers were probably abused by him every day. Bob, what's going on, boss? The president of the construction company came running in at a tremendous speed. Look at this, we're getting a lot of complaints. It's a little subcontractor. I've already fired that guy. No complaints about you. Look, with that, the president slapped Bob with a piece of paper with a complaint written. That's a complaint from us workers. We've been enduring Bob's unreasonable harassment and verbal abuse for a long time. He wrote that down on paper and sent it to us. You're fired. I heard you harassed him relentlessly. I heard that you even made him redo the work over and over again on purpose. The president of the company told me personally. Do you believe that it was him? The high school graduate name is Thomas? Yes, Thomas. Bob never called me by my name, so I guess he forgot. Is he making all these accusations on his own? It's okay, sir. I fired that guy. And it's not just Thomas, the entire workflow is suing you. And you fired him? You're the former, so you don't have the authority to fire a subcontractor. Oh no. After Bob fired me, I went to the boss. And all the other employees too. I went to the president of my company for advice. My company's president was kind enough to think about it and work to protect us. But I'm a former, I just told the workers what to do. How could they call the harassment? They accused me of that and demanded I remove them from the job site. You don't have to do what the subcontractors say. They are the subcontractors. We were a main constructor. We can ignore such demands. Besides, even the president has always been tough on subcontractors. Bob is right. The president does not treat subcontractors properly either. And this pleasant attitude towards the subcontractors is even worse. That's not the case this time. Things are far worse. I was had a stern look on his face. What do you mean? You see, our company has been overdue on subcontractor payments. The other party said they would sue us over it. But we were prime constructor. We can ignore that. This is against the law. That's not my problem. You never said anything about it before. You triggered this whole thing and suddenly I was angry and it's your fault. The president started blaming Bob for his sins as well. Well, the complaint against Bob indeed is what started the problem. Bob is not entirely without responsibility. You deliberately harassed him into redoing the work over and over again and and he also pointed out that you were yelling at the workers, blaming them for your mistakes. They even put a lawyer on you, so things are pretty bad. I'll have you take responsibility for what happened before. And I've told them and I've told them to remove you as a farmer first. Then please don't fire me. That's not how it works. This is my decision as president. 
having an employee like you is detrimental to our company. Just shut up and do what I tell you. I won't even give you seven months pay if you let this any longer. That's not good enough. Then get the hell out of here. They are trying to get Bob off the hook for breaking the law by firing him. Bob couldn't stand up to the boss any longer, so he just left. I just bought the workers some street. I ran into Bob as he was leaving the site. What's the matter, Bob? You're home so early. Shut up, I just got fired. I'm sorry to hear that. It's your fault, that was so unnecessary. You high school graduate. I was reporting the facts. Why don't you look back on your actions? You deserve everything. If we weren't for you, none of this would have happened. I'll hate you for the rest of my life. Oh, I see. Well, I bought you all some shit. I've got some for you too, Bob, for all the help you did for me. I said that and I spilled cock all over him. It was payback for that time. It was the perfect moment for me to get back up, Bob, for getting fired. Bob was covered in coke and went home frustrated. And I wasn't fired from the company, I just took some time off. Bob got fired and I started working on the job site again. Bob's replacement, the former, was really nice, hardworking guy. And the workers were all much more present to work with. The work is going much better than it was with Bob. And the work was going to be finished ahead of schedule. One day, however, Bob came to Bunt Light's site at night. We were surprised when we went to the site the following day. However, the security camera caught him in the act. Bob was caught immediately, and the company fired a claim for damages against Bob. What's more, this led to our president decided to sue the construction company, saying he couldn't keep quiet any longer. Not only was the subcontract not overdue, but the subcontract payment had been further reduced. This is a complete violation of the law. Our president has decided to abandon the contract with his company. He made this decision because he believed that it hurt the company more if employees keep getting the mates. It was true that losing the contract with a major contracting company was a blow to the company, but president put us employees first. I was really proud to know that my company is an excellent company that protects its employees. On the other hand, major construction company that was the main constructor was the worst. They did the same thing to other subcontractors. After we sued them, other companies sued them as well. This ruined the company credibility and it stopped plummeted. The president was caught doing all other wrongdoing and was finally arrested. The president misconduct and illegal actions against the subcontractors made the news. The company went bankrupt. On the other hand, our company's employees have a lot of trust in the president and everyone was worked together. Thanks to this, new contracts were quickly secured and the company ran stably. I'm a high school graduate with less academic background. However, I found a good company and I enjoy working with good colleagues.